Yo, what's up droners and welcome to Mavic stuff because I want to talk about Mavic stuff today. Mavic is definitely one of my favorite drones I've ever had. Not a, the, the best part about it is obviously the fold, how it folds up into a little. So a lot of people in the comments have been calling me a chump about this drone because I like it so much. But honestly, my favorite thing about this drone is this, what you're seeing right now. This is how little it gets. This thing folds up and goes with me everywhere I want to go. Obviously the image quality isn't as good as the bigger drones, but the ability, like, I've heard some advice from some of my best cinematographer, friend, cinematographer friends that'll say that the best camera that you have, the best camera to shoot with is one that you have. So obviously if you can bring a big camera, if you can bring an amazing camera, if you can have the big camera, of course you're gonna want that. But the one that's with you is more important, especially if it's just this one. So I love this one because it can go with me anywhere. I love the flight time on it. It gets over 20, it might get about 23 minutes of flight time on this thing, which is definitely more than my Inspire 1. Um, and it's just, it just has every kind of feature you could really want on a drone. But there are some drawbacks, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, the biggest drawback of a Mavic, outside of hooking your phone to the controller, that thing is very difficult to do, um, is actually the camera itself. Um, and this is probably why people are making fun of me in the comment section is because I'm a professional drone pilot and I cannot use a Mavic for my professional drone cinematography. It just, it doesn't work. Um, and the reason it doesn't work is because I actually compare, when I explain to like clients or something like they say, well, do you have anything smaller sometimes asking if I have a drone? And I'll say, well, yeah, I do. But the Mavic's camera is kind of like, uh, this is an iPhone 7 plus. Um, I always explain this thing. It's like, oh, this camera is very similar to this camera because they're both very small and they both shoot in 4K. Um, but you have to ask yourself, if you have these huge cameras that these productions are using that shoot in 4K, then what's the difference with the camera like this that shoots in 4K? Now, I'm not going to go into the super specs of it all, but I'll tell you specifically what I found that works and what doesn't work on the Mavic. Now, if you reference back to the video I did before about the picture profile settings for the um, Phantom 4 Pro, you'll notice the advice that I gave you is that you should use certain kind of picture profiles so that you can go into post-production and be able to play with the colors, to play with the look of the image, and be able to do things with it, be able to move it around, stretch it, pull it, and make it look better because you have such a high quality image from the Phantom 4 Pro, especially compared to this. Now, with the, Phantom, with the Mavic, you can't really do that. Like you pretty much take all the advice that I gave you for the um, for the Phantom 4 Pro and just throw it out of the window because that doesn't work for the Mavic. See with the Mavic it still has all the same color profile settings as the um, as the Phantom but it doesn't have the bit rate and bit rate it tells you how much information you're getting like for each second or each frame of image that you're shooting. So the bit rate on this is much lower and that causes an issue especially when you want to do something like what we were talking about before is shooting flat. Typically you shoot flat or color, uh, which on this one is called a D-log color profile where it's just everything looks really gray and typically you shoot flat so that you can match the drone camera to another camera. And that works really, really well on the Phantom 4 Pro up. But anything below a Phantom 4 Pro, you shoot it flat, it could be a problem because like I said, the bit rate isn't quite there. So if you shoot flat on this drone, then you try to put it into some like DaVinci coloring or it, just try to color the image at all and it's not, gonna hold up, it's not gonna look good, it's gonna look weird. Um, and by weird, I mean not good. But my cinematography friends will say things like, it looks blocky, it looks this, it looks that. They have a lot of words to describe it, soft or uh, what's it called, busy. They use a lot of different words to describe how it looks, but when it really comes down to it, it's not pleasing to the eye. That's what they mean. It's not as pleasing to the eye as they're used to with bigger cameras, with bigger drone cameras, with bigger regular cameras. It just doesn't compare. So typically with this, I shoot just regular standard color profile under normal because otherwise you're just not, like you just gotta work with what the camera's giving you. And if I have any issues when I'm flying, dialing in the color to look perfectly or whatever, the image is, I'm just not happy with it. I might shoot decini like because you can play with it a little bit in post. Um, a little bit more than you could with normal, and it still looks pretty normal without even having to do anything in post. But for the most part, I try to fly normal. So what I mean by dialing in, um, besides the color profiles, is that there's uh, these profile, there's other things you can deal with, the saturation, the contrast, and the sharpness, that you just keep at zero. You don't touch them, you leave them alone. But on the Mavic, you'll notice that when there's areas of the, when, there's, when you're doing an image that's a big image that has very detailed areas to it, like a tree, like you'll have like a coastline and on one side you'll have trees and the other side you'll have like the ocean. The oceans will look great, the sky looks awesome and you look over the trees and it's like soft. It almost looks like it's like that one section of the, of the image is out of focus. But what it is is that it just isn't able to collect enough data or write the data or something. I don't really know exactly what it is, but I do know that it's soft and it doesn't look good. And I was like, it's very frustrating. And I've had people call me about it and talk to me about it and trying to figure it out. But 
one of my business partners, Kyle Kroll, figured it out. Um, he found it by doing a lot of researches and forum searching is that what you can actually do is go into the part where I was talking about you never touch the dialing in part and take the sharpness section of it and go to plus one. So what the issue is is that when you have all the settings on a Mavic to zero, one of the things that it does is it's doing noise reduction. And the noise in an image is when it's just like grainy, almost looks like static image and it normally comes in areas of high detail. And the issue with this is that it will take entire areas of detail, consider it static, and then make it soft. So that it's, you know, it's getting rid of the noise. And that's a problem. So what you do is you go plus one on the sharpness, and that is actually adding sharpness to the image, which you normally don't want to do, but it takes away from the noise reduction. And that makes it so overall, just like a lesser of two evens, like which poison do you pick kind of thing. But it just looks better, it does. It makes it so you can actually see the details, you don't have a soft focus in certain areas. It makes some of the areas a little bit sharper than you might want them to be, but overall the image quality is better. So that's what I would recommend is that you, when you're playing with the Mavic, you definitely just always go into your custom settings, go over to the sharpness, and then hit plus one, because that will definitely make it, uh, make it better. All right, so if you, if, as you can see here, as I'm flying, you can tell that the, the trees are out of focus, they're sharpness. Right now, my settings are at zero, zero, zero. This is what standard Mavic image is gonna look like. This is straight out of the camera. This is no adjustments to anything. And you can see it right there. It is just soft for no reason. So there it is, bam, you got it. Now, we're gonna go back, take off again. And now I'm flying it with the, sat, the sharpness at plus one. As you can see, the image looks a little bit different and you don't have that super soft in that same spot anymore. It's just not there. That helps. So for me, this is one of the biggest tips I've ever been given for the Mavic. So I was super happy, Kyle, I was super appreciative of Kyle because it was a very frustrating thing. Cause I couldn't use this, I was having trouble using this footage for anything, even for like personal use because everybody knows me as the drone guy and then if I put out images that have soft areas in them, then like, well, you know, he's not that good, but he likes to fly. So for me, it was a little bit embarrassing and I couldn't use the images, I couldn't use the footage. And now I'm happier with it. I'm still not like super eager to use Mavic footage, but at the same time, I still love this drone so much and this makes it better. So I'm happy, the camera guys are happier and everybody wins. So yeah, make sure you use your Mavic. And always, always, as always, don't forget, you gotta have your, your ND filters that I get from Polar Pro because they're the best. Droners, thank you for checking out this edition of Mavic list like but not really video just helpful stuff and if you want to see more helpful stuff we got it or if you'd like to see the greatest intro video to a drone video channel ever bam there it is as always we really appreciate your support you can show it in a few different ways number one you can be as fly as i am by getting one of these shirts that are at the link below or you can subscribe because that really allows us to do what we're doing hit up our patreon because that is a really dope way to do it and as always make sure you stay fly